Hi everyone, my name is Kim Miller. I'm the executive director and the founder of FemArt. We're a nonprofit 501c3 and we support and promote women artists. And today it is my privilege to introduce to you Debbie Pounders, who I will be interviewing for our upcoming show, Where the Wild Women Go. This will be our first virtual show and we're looking forward to seeing Debbie's work in this show. And I would like to welcome you, Debbie, and ask you our first question, and that is, what inspires you to do art? Feelings. I'm very emotional, um, very sensitive person. And uh, when I painted Rise, there was a lot going on in the world in 2016 the election and the, the, the media and children were being bullied and committing suicide. And I had just finished with Portraits for Hope, a program that was sponsored by uh, charitable families in Jacksonville. And uh, I painted a bunch of children that had lost their lives to gang violence and to really a lot of cases were never solved. So when I painted the children and gave the paintings to the families and sat across from them at a table and listened to them tell me their story. And we had to read the uh, police report to find out as much as we could about the child we were getting ready to paint. There was a very, very deep hole in me after that. We ran out of money, we ran out of funding, it only lasted about a year and a half. So after that, I seeked out a friend of mine who uh, works for a dance school. And I asked her, may I please come and take photographs of your dancers? And it was basically just for me to help me with figurative work. And when I went and took the photographs, I had parents coming to me asking me to paint their children. So that helped me so much. And in Rise, um, there is one of the girls that I painted before. And her name, first name is Kirsten. And the painting was sold to her family as a gift to her for Christmas. And she had just received the bad news that she had hip dysplasia and could no longer dance. So I decided to use her in my painting rise because she went through a lot. Children were going through a lot in 2016. There was a lot going on in my personal life. There was a lot going on in my musical life. When David Bowie died, I lost a lot of me. So in my heart, I wanted to get a huge canvas and pour myself into that canvas and kind of rise up, get away from it, you know, rise, touch the stars, reach up away from the earth. And uh, that's what that painting is about. There was, there's a lot of angst from that painting, Rise, and she has been promoted and used, and she's in publications, and this publication as well, and um, she's big painting. And uh, when I painted her, I had to do this in order to help myself get the hands right, you know, get the body right. So my husband stood in front of me as I did this on my canvas so that he could get my, my radius of my hand here to my hand here. So that's what I did to get that correct. I but, love um, that, and that is such a great inspirational um, answer. And actually, that leads into my next question about your second piece, Tomorrowland, because of current situations. I would like for you to tell us a little bit about not just the inspiration, but the story behind the art. You are a very purposeful artist that um, your intentions touched me. And just as a side note to everyone, I practically begged you to be in this show because of Rise. I love that piece and it's always touched me and we've used it in some of our promotional material because I think it speaks to volumes to so many um, 
adolescence and so much of our future and stuff. So that will lead us into your um, talking about your impact locally regarding your next piece that you're gonna describe about Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland uh, was out of the blue, basically. Um, 2019 was a rough year for my family. My husband's been very sick. And um, I had been staying close to home, had not been going out, had not been doing many things. And there was one time I went out and I had a hair appointment. I hadn't had a haircut in months and uh, I was waiting for my appointment to open. And this beautiful woman had a baby on her back and she was standing outside of the pound store off of landing beside Ollie's. And I stopped and I told her, you were so beautiful. And she blushed and she turned. And I said, may I please take your photograph? I'm an artist. I might paint you if that's okay. And of course, she said that she had been in the country for six months and she's from Rwanda. Her name was Ruli. It's R-H-U-L-L-I, Ruli. And I took the photograph and there was so much joy in her pride of, I think freedom was in her face. So she was able to walk among other people. She had her baby on her back and she was where she needed to be. She may have been waiting for somebody inside the store, I don't know. And when she spoke to me, she spoke, basically in her language. I didn't really, you know, could not understand her very much, but what I did get out that she had been there six months, been here six months. And I took the photograph and went on my merry way. And then I texted it to a friend of mine, Beth Hazlett, who is one of my best friends. And I said, I have gotten a photograph that I want to paint this woman. I said, she had so much beauty. I know she had a story to tell. And I really wish I could have heard her story. And I've been back to the pound store and I gave them my card and I showed them a picture of the painting and I showed them a picture that I took of her. And I said, she was standing outside your store, so please have her contact me so that I can let her know that I did the painting. And I don't expect anyone to buy it. That, and that's just the thing with me. I paint for me. I don't paint to sell. But what happens is the passion is so poured into my work that I think people see that passion and then they like, wow, you know, so I end up selling it. It's weird. But I think now more than anything, that painting, I had no clue. Yes. That yeah. That, that, that was something too with um, our current situation. I felt that the timing, um, and it's not a situation, I, that's the wrong word to use. Um, this is a continual struggle in our country yeah. to recognize people for the freedoms that we are promised yeah. in our constitution. And I think um, I want to kind of emphasize too of the importance. I know I was asking about your impact locally and everything, but globally, um, globally we're all going through a pandemic. We are all experiencing mm -hmm. the different aspects of diseases that affect humanity. And I think here in the United States, on top of a pandemic, we're also facing another great plague on humanity and that is how we treat each other. So your Tomorrowland, I would like for you to now explain a little bit more of how you believe that the world will receive your artwork and um, your, your passion is just pouring through, not just your words, but through your art. You are a very, very important voice for us to have in the arts right now because you are reflecting um, the, deepest of our humanity right now. So um, I just wanted to kind of break off to that and give it back to you. So if you could just explain a little bit more about your 
hope for a reception of your artwork, that, of these two pieces to the world? I just want everyone else to see the beauty in her. She's got so much love for that child on her back and so much pride. She's just a mother. She's just a mom, you know? Um, also, and I gotta say this, I'm a preacher's daughter. I grew up with a very strict background and the one thing I have to stress is God created this all in his image. We're not supposed to see color. <laughs> we're just supposed to, we're, to, we're here together. You know, we're all just trying to make it together. So I'm hoping that the world will see the love that she has for a baby and um, the passion that she has for just having life where she's got freedom. And uh, I, we still need to keep fighting for our freedoms, all of us, because right now we're taking it so far. It's, it's crazy. And it, it's, it's not a gift, it's something we have to fight for. And um, I, I'm thankful. I, I am, I'm a stepmom, and I, I'm close to my stepchildren. But if I had my own child, I had one that I had in my own womb, I would worry about their future. I worry about my granddaughters and my grandsons, and I talk to my in-laws, and they're worried about their futures. And um, I think that painting cries freedom. That's what I think. So, and um, she was standing in front of the store with the reflections of the cars, <laughs> but I decided to give her a field of blue. <laughs> purples you know I, that's what I do I, I make up a world in my work you know it, it comes from my heart so I I, I'm, I'm hoping that it's received that way